Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on culture and identity, focusing on functionalism and socialization. As one of the grand narratives of society, functionalist sociologists take a structural look at society and in doing so argue that social institutions play a vital role in performing the function of socialization in society through both primary and secondary socialization. Parsons, in his systems theory, suggested that social institutions play an important role as agents of socialization, and in particular he focused on the role of the family in acting as an agent of primary socialization. Like many other functionalists, Parsons argued that one of the most important functions of the family was to teach the next generation the norms and values of society that they live in. At first, children are socialised into the particularistic values of the family unit, that is, the norms and values that are specific to the family group. Later socialisation will also reinforce the value consensus of wider society, and families are aided in this task by agents of secondary socialisation. Parsons saw both education and religion as performing secondary socialisation, and argued that these social institutions transmitted the universal norms and values of wider society to young members of society. In education, this is achieved through the hidden or informal curriculum, teaching hierarchies, obedience to authority and conformity with social norms and values. In religion, this is done through reinforcing moral codes and values, and these enable young people to understand what is expected of them in wider society. Primary socialisation, which according to Parsons was one of the most basic and irreducible functions of the family unit, also socialises children into their gender roles through the process of gender socialisation. Like other functionalists, Parsons argued that the nuclear family, two adults of opposite sexes and their children, was the optimal structure for performing this task. Children could be socialised by their same-sex parent into the expectations of their appropriate gender role. For males, this would be the instrumental role, while for females, this would be the expressive role. Parsons' sex role theory explained that there was a biological division of labour based upon the characteristics of males and females, with girls being socialised into the caring, nurturing, expressive role, looking after the family and providing emotional support. In contrast, boys would be socialised into the instrumental role, more concerned with economic gain and discipline. However, Parsons suggested that as boys modelled their behaviour on that of their fathers, this created problems with their socialisation. Boys were unable to witness what their father did on a day-to-day -day basis, and this created the potential for them to deviate due to incomplete socialisation. This view of male socialisation being incomplete without the control of a father figure was later expanded upon by many new right thinkers and subsequently blaming lone parent families for the emergence of an underclass of young males who were not adequately socialised. However, this has led to many critics, including feminist thinkers, who suggest that this is a victim blaming approach. The process of secondary socialisation was elaborated upon by Emile Durkheim. He suggested that agents of secondary socialisation, such as education, operated as a society in miniature, a training ground for young people to learn the norms and values of society. Whilst families perform part of this function, children often have ascribed status in the family unit, for example a son or a daughter, Yet in wider society, their status is linked into their achievements, their level of education, employment status and occupation. In order to bridge this gap, schools would replicate elements of wider society through the interactions between pupils and teachers and the structure and organisation of schooling. This is often taught implicitly through the hidden curriculum, with hierarchies, obedience and conformity expected of pupils. Parsons agreed, suggesting that other institutions pass on similar norms and values. For example, religion passes on the moral values and codes of society, for example, the Ten Commandments. 
This ensures that young people are able to take their place in society as fully functioning members, knowing and understanding how to act and the importance of the value consensus in society. But functionists argue that socialisation is not just important for the individual, but for society as a whole. Whilst adequate socialisation may lead to individuals being able to take on their roles as fully functioning members, there are wider benefits to socialisation. Socialisation, and in particular the value consensus, is key to ensuring that society does not undergo rapid social changes that could destabilise that society. Maintaining the value consensus by passing it on to the next generation helps to slow down social change. Socialisation reinforces ideas of conformity and obedience to authority, whilst also punishing deviant behaviours through social disapproval, what is seen as informal social control. This prevents society from undergoing rapid social changes that could lead to anomie, a state of normlessness, where there is a disagreement on what values individuals should have. Without a value consensus and an agreement on what is right and wrong, society will experience a decline in the social bonds that hold it together and descend into chaos. While some theorists would suggest that social change is necessary, functionists prefer this change to be slow and gradual. Society should evolve rather than be thrown into revolution. The many critics of functionalist views of socialisation come from other structural theories, namely Marxism and feminism. They agree with functionalists that socialisation is a powerful way of educating the next generation of society, but are critical of the norms and values that individuals are socialised into. Marxists argue that the value consensus reflects that of the ruling class and perpetuates the spread of capitalism. Meritocracy, hard work and acceptance of hierarchies of authority are examples of how socialisation serves those in power. Similarly, feminists criticise societal norms and values as being patriarchal, particularly those that reinforce women's subordinate position in the home, in work and in the public sphere. Other theories, such as social action theories, are critical of the deterministic nature of functionalist and other structural explanations. They argue that people do not blindly accept social norms and values, but question and even reject the process of socialisation. Garfinkel argues that individuals are not merely passive recipients of information, what he called cultural dopes, but instead actively choose whether or not to accept the norms and values of a society. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on culture and identity, examining functionalism and socialisation. Thanks for watching.